The ancient inhabitants of South America, particularly from sites like Lapa do Santo, provide fascinating insights into the genetic and cultural makeup of early South American populations. Lapa do Santo, an archaeological site in central Brazil, has yielded evidence of a Stone Age culture that dates back more than 12,000 years. These early Brazilians practiced complex burial rituals and left behind intricate rock carvings, pointing to a well-established society. Their skeletal remains offer clues about the genetic ancestry, which suggests a deep connection to populations in both Eurasia and East Asia. Genetic studies indicate that these ancient Brazilians were part of the first wave of human migrations into the Americas, carrying genetic lineages that trace back to both ancient North Eurasians and the ancient East Asian populations. The ancient North Eurasian ancestry present in the early inhabitants of Lapa do Santo and other regions of the Americas is linked to populations that once roamed Siberia during the Ice Age. These ancient North Eurasian peoples played a significant role in shaping the genetic landscape of Native Americans, contributing to the unique combination of genetic influences that define many indigenous populations. At the same time, ancient Brazilians also share ancestry with ancient East Asian populations. For this video, I gathered 31 Stone Age South American genomes from a study called Reconstructing the Deep Population History of Central and South America, published in 2018, which features genomes of not only Lapa del Santo, but many other South American Stone Age Native American samples. Samples close to modernity were also included, such as the two Lara made samples, which were close to the colonial period in historical timeline. All male samples carried Y lineage Q1. I ran the samples through my trait predictor tool for DNA analysis. Link to purchase will be in the description of the video. The most common predicted phenotype among the South American samples was Choshio, which is an East Asian type, followed by Cynid and Tonkinesid, which are also East Asian morphological types. Atabaskid type was also present, along with Turanid and Southern Mongoloid, which are also East Asian types. Only one out of 31 samples scored a non-mongoloid phenotype, which was permitted. Here is a morph of the average predicted phenotype. Every sample of the 31 samples featured was predicted to have straight black hair and a snub-shaped nose. The most common predicted eye color was dark brown, although regular brown eyes were also pretty common. No sample scored non-brown eye color. The most common predicted skin color was light brown, although olive was also pretty common. One sample scored white skin as its predicted as skin color. Overall, the typical Stone Age South American is shorter than average, has light brown skin, dark brown eyes, straight black hair and a snub-shaped nose. To my surprise, the warrior phenotype was slightly more common among these samples than the warrior phenotype. I was surprised by this because non-Europeans are known to be predisposed to warrior genotypes in combs, best exemplified by the wall mat SNP. But I suppose this result can be explained by the effect of MAOA and MAOB genes, where Native Americans do not have predispositions to the warrior phenotype. The Stone Age South Americans were predisposed to higher availability of T2 receptors, which predisposes them to thought disorders such as schizophrenia. Regarding polygenic bipolar odds, which is strongly linked to schizophrenia, they also had increased odds of bipolar type 1. They were predisposed to lower levels of 5-HT, which predisposes them to higher odds of anxiety and depression. They had strong predispositions to autism, which is typical of Eurasians with my calculator, and not a single sample was predicted to be lactase persistent. They were strongly predisposed to a low level of empathy, which is typical for East Eurasians. They were predisposed to average odds of cardiovascular issues and intermediate homocysteine levels. They had lower levels of bad LDL cholesterol, which is good. They also had a predisposition to lower odds of obesity, which is pretty good. Almost all of them except one had the endurance, sports, genotype, and ACTN3, reflecting their predisposition to lower athleticism and shortage of type 2 muscle fibers. Almost all of them had high predisposition to epithelial cancers. 
they had low predisposition to autoimmune disorders based on HLA genotypes, which is good, and very low odds of multiple sclerosis, which is a condition that is known to mainly affect Europeans. They had a high predisposition to myopia, which is common in East Eurasians. They had a predisposition to shorter than average telomere lengths, which means shorter biological lifespans. The Stone Age South Americans had predispositions to lower odds of syncope, which is a spontaneous loss of consciousness due to a loss of blood flow to the brain. All 31 samples were predicted to exhibit blood type O. No other blood types were observed among the 31 samples. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out the description of the video for links to research data and make sure to leave a like and subscribe in case you aren't already.